an engineering student here in India used to live in a hostel. And one of the issues he had in his hostel was too many mosquitoes around. You can imagine how hostels in India can be. Now as a solution to this, this gentleman used to use the mosquito net. While sleeping on the mattress, he would tuck the mosquito net under his mattress so that not a single mosquito would enter and bite him. One morning, as this guy got up, he saw that he was bitten by a mosquito. Extremely astonished and surprised, he saw that the net was still tucked under the mattress. Where did the mosquito come from? On observing, he found that there was a hole in the mosquito net. Engineer as he was, he had to find a solution to this problem. He didn't have a needle. He didn't have a thread. He didn't know how to sew. He didn't want to go to anyone who knew how to sew. He decided to find a solution. He made another hole parallel to this hole in the net and took a pipe and passed it from one hole to the other. <laughs> so that the mosquito comes in from one hole, enters into the pipe and goes out to the other side of the hole. Engineers offer solutions to problems. Doctors offer solutions to problems. Bankers offer solutions to problems. Lawyers offer solutions to problems. Accountants offer solutions to problems. And I, as an electrical engineer myself, thought that I would also offer solutions to problems in the society, but in a different way. I decided to be a square peg in a round hole. I don't think that analogy suits too good to me. I would say I decided to be like a round peg in a square hole, especially given my hairstyle. It's a very round peg in a square hole. In fact, I was discussing with one of my friends and I told this friend of mine, look man, look at my hairstyle. What an incredible advantage. I don't have to spend time grooming my hair. The guy said to me, that's an advantage, but there's a disadvantage as well. You don't know till where to wash your face because there's no <laughs> So anyways, that said, I decided to contribute to the society in a different way by trying to help bring a social change by spreading awareness of universal spiritual principles and teachings. I'm sure a lot of you here are aware of what an oxymoron is. An oxymoron is two opposite, contradictory words put in a phrase for a very impactful meaning. To give you an example, we would say, she is pretty ugly. Now, pretty and ugly are two opposite words. Or sometimes people say, can you give me an exact estimate? Exact? Estimate. Sometimes they say, why don't you act naturally? <laughs> well, act and natural, they're opposite words, aren't they? Or sometimes they would say, this guy is seriously funny. <laughs> I found a guy said, he was found missing. <laughs> and in the modern world they say, he's a sincere student from IIM Raji. <laughs> say business ethics <laughs> and the funniest of all I love is happily married <laughs> ladies and gentlemen I do feel that business ethics is an oxymoron you know why I say this because it's all about wanting valuables valuables at the cost of values. There's nothing wrong with valuables. But when valuables are achieved and gained at the cost of values, the society faces a major threat of a disease called corruption. NASA decided to launch their expedition on Mars. They invited applications 
from across the globe. And the condition of the application was that every applicant knew that it was a one-way expedition. Having gone there, the astronaut may never come back again. Gone, gone. First, an American astronaut came and applied. The NASA chief, as he was interviewing him, he asked him, so you know, right, if you go there, you may never come back again? He said, of course. The chief asked him, so what is your quote? The American astronaut said, one billion dollars, sir. The NASA chief said, a billion dollars? He said, of course. If I'm going there, I might as well benefit my family with a billion dollars if I'm not coming back ever again. They put him in a hole. The second applicant was a German astronaut. Said, you know, right, having gone there, you never come back. So, yeah. How much is your quote, sir? He said, two billion American dollars. Said, two billion, the American astronauts quoting a billion. You're quoting two billion? What for? The guy said, one billion for my family, one billion for social welfare and charity. And then the third applicant came, it was a corrupt Indian politician. <laughs> I use the word corrupt Indian politician because not necessarily all politicians are corrupt. The NASA chief said, you're not even an astronaut. <laughs> you know the condition here? Yeah? How much is your quote? He said, three billion dollars. He said, the American astronauts quoting a billion, the German astronauts quoting a billion, and you're not even an astronaut and you're quoting three billion? What for? The guy said, look, sir, you keep one billion. <laughs> I will keep one billion. And we'll give one billion to the American astronaut and send them on Mars. <laughs> now, now, I must tell you something. I must tell you something. This is the disease when values go down the drain. That we use people, sincere people, the American astronaut, German astronaut, talented people. We use people to simply gain our valuables. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the modern world, Across the globe, and even in this country, corruption is a bad disease. And some people are just hardwired. No matter how hard you try to teach them these values of being clean, ethical, moral, these guys are just so absolutely hardwired that they just won't change. I would say, yes, legislation, governance-wise, there are steps being taken. Universe, by its laws, will take the steps. Social media will certainly expose them today. But meanwhile, I, as a spiritual activist, work a lot with youth by trying to teach them not that you don't have your valuables, but have your valuables based on values. Across the globe, the youngsters and the younger generation is becoming more conscientious is becoming more responsible, is trying to usher in an era which is based on ethical, moral, and spiritual principles. This is the first principle that I want to share. Value-based valuables which will stop corruption. Will it stop? May not. At least it wouldn't add further to the corruption. If we are not a part of the solution, at least let us not be a part of the problem by trying to usher in this era and this age of value-based valuables. Everyone in this world wants to have. Everyone wants to get. How many of you want to earn a lot of money? In the dark place, I can't see much, but I'm sure you would like to have a lot of money. How many of you would like a Lamborghini? Wow, any of you would like to drive an Aston Martin here? Anyone for a Ferrari? No, there's a loads of hands up there, being sure. Everyone wants gain, everyone wants money, everyone wants to get and have and achieve. In a class, a teacher asked the students, I would like to know what would you want to be when you grow up? So she asked a guy called Varun, Varun, can you tell us what would you want to be when you grow up? Varun got up and said, I would like to be the richest man on planet Earth with 20 homes, 700 cars, 100 servants, 
five Swiss bank accounts and a private jet to myself. I want to achieve, ma'am. The teacher said, look, I asked you to just answer in one line. You've given me an essay. Now, when I ask this question to everyone else, answer in one line, please. So the teacher turned to a girl in the class called Pooja. said, Pooja, what would you like to be when you grow up? She said, Varun's wife, madam. <laughs> I must tell you, everyone wants to gain and achieve. Capitalism is about achieving. Capitalism is about a passion to achieve, have, and hold. My proposal is conscious capitalism. Capitalism by itself is not bad if we make it conscious capitalism. And what do I mean by conscious capitalism? Pretty simple. Capitalism is about a passion to achieve. Conscious capitalism is about a passion to achieve and compassion to share. I must tell you something. In the world today, and even in this country, India, particularly here, there are many, many genuine, sincere people who need help. And thus, conscious capitalism means earn and achieve with passion and spend with compassion. I travel across the globe speaking at large business houses, corporate events, conferences, conclaves, to inspire a community of conscious capitalists. Every social initiative needs funding. Every social initiative needs money. I, as a spiritual activist, am going and speaking at these gatherings to create a network and a community of such conscious capitalists who will not just limit their giving to CSR, but take that extra mile to truly benefit some social initiative that will usher in a change. Therefore, Mark Twain said, we make a living out of what we get, but we make a life out of what we give. How many of you here would like to look beautiful? I guess those who are not raising their hands, they think they're already beautiful actually. <laughs> no one looks as good as their Facebook profile picture. And no one looks as ugly as their Aadhaar card or driving license picture. No one. Everyone wants to look great. The world today talks about personality. And personality is reduced to your looks, your charisma, your talents, your skills, your abilities. And in the course of pursuing a great personality, very often we forget being a good person. Ladies and gentlemen, I think Jesus Christ said, men must change before kingdoms do. Organizations are made of people. Communities are made of people. Nations are made of people. The world is made of people. Institutions is made of people. We cannot we cannot bring a social change unless we help change people. Only when people change can there be a social change. And we want people to become sensitive individuals, sensitive to others. Imagine sensitive human beings, you know. Why would there be domestic violence when we have sensitive human beings, good persons, not just after personality, but being a person? Why would there be rapes when people have changed to be sensitive to the needs of others? Why would there be a climate change and ecological disasters when people have changed and are sensitive individuals? I must say one thing. When we are talking about changing the ecology outside, we first have to change the ecology inside. Every issue outside is related to an issue internally. This is why as a spiritual activist, I teach spiritual practices called in Sanskrit as sadhana. Some teach meditation, some teach yoga, some teach prayer. I, the tradition that I represent, I teach the chanting of the holy names of God to try clean the inner ecology in a way 
that an external change can also be brought about. Yes, I bring an awareness amongst people. It's not just about personality. It's about being a sensitive person. It's not just about charisma. It's about character. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, if we want to see a social change in the world, the first thing, we need to be the change ourselves. And secondly, we need to all join hands together and contribute in our own ways together to activate and bring that social change. I, as a spiritual activist, as a spiritual leader, try my little humble bit by doing these three things. Value-based valuables, which will at least not add further to the corruption, training the youth, conscious capitalism, training the industrialists and business houses to fund initiatives where earn and achieve with passion and spend with compassion. And thirdly, at the grassroots levels, as a social media and video blogger, I spread awareness through videos on not just having a personality, but being a sensitive person, not just having charisma, but having character. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all very much for your kind attention.